We're going live. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Locked On Warriors. And it's going to be a positive show because the Warriors won. That's how this thing rolls. The road success continues. And I have Hall of Famer, one of the, the officially top 50 greatest players of all time, Rick Barry. I think you're a top 25 in my humble opinion, sir. We're going to break down a huge Warriors victory. I don't know what it is about the road, but it translates to success. This is Locked On Warriors. You are Locked On Warriors. Your daily Golden State Warriors podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for making Locked On Warriors your first listen every day. We're free and available wherever you get podcasts. And on YouTube, we're part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by the official sports book of Locked On, and that's FanDuel. Make every moment more right now. New customers get $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $200 if your bet wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On to get started follow hall of famer nba top 50 all-time player in the top 50 i think you're closer to 20 in my humble opinion on all social media platforms he's also in the hall of fame he's the 1975 nba finals most valuable player one of the legends the all-time greats rick barry follow him on social media regardless of the platform it's the same handle at rick 24 barry rick how are you doing sir great to have you two nights in a row i am honored and uh, your reaction to the Warriors, strange game, low scoring game, but they win again. Great to see you, sir. Yeah, I'm very happy, actually. I mean, they need to win as many games as they can here going down the stretch. Uh, that's, that's pretty obvious. And to do it on the road, you know, not against a you know, horrible team at all, but also to not have a great offensive game. It's like they're turning into some kind of a road-winning defensive team. I mean, this is this is almost mind-numbing, to be perfectly honest. Uh, they didn't shoot the ball well as a team from the field, uh, and, and yet they managed to win. They hold their opponents to another, you know, low amount of points. So, whatever the hell they're doing, they you know keep doing it, I guess. And then hopefully the offense will come alive. But defensively, keep doing what you're doing. Or was it was it just one of those? Space, you know, Star Trek things. The space-time continuum was all screwed up, and the other the paradox, team, <laughs> crappy game. Well, it wasn't their defense was good; they just stuffed it up. I mean, but that would have had to happen two nights in a row, you know. So, yeah, I mean, neither Clay nor Steph had a big game. You know, Kaminga didn't do anything super special. I mean, Wiggins was the one guy that played very well, and yeah, it's 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 kind of interesting, but it just shows you my motto that I live by. We've talked about this so many times. Always expect the unexpected when it comes to the NBA. And just life in general, right? I mean, but, but particularly the, the, the NBA. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, let's start early in the game. You're, Andrew Wiggins is going to get his love tonight. It, he looked like his old self. Um, this was one of, he, this was in the top two of his, of his uh, performances all season. There's only one other, other game I could think of that rivaled this. Uh, and, and I don't think they win this game without Wiggins playing like his old self tonight. Uh, led the way for the Warriors with 23 points. Uh, six rebounds and the rebounding side to me is where they particularly need them. That toughness inside um, was also three of six from beyond the arc, 50%. That's a good thing. He also had trips to the free throw line, five free throw attempts to lead the team of uh, plus 12 in net rating. Um, Wiggins was fantastic. And we can talk about him as uh, more in a little bit, but early in this game, the Warriors were already shorthanded, Rick, uh, Jonathan Kaminga, paid a price for his high-flying antics uh, with that insane uh, lob dunk that he had uh, uh, the putback just the game before in Miami. Um, I don't know if that had anything to do with it, but uh, regardless, he misses the game because of uh, knee soreness um, for a 21-year-old. That's always weird to me to, to keep a kid out. I, I hope it's it's. I hope he's okay. Um, and, and I, I just, at the same time, I hope it wasn't like, over, you know, they're, I hope they're not being overly cautious either. Uh, but with that said, Kaming is out. Then Draymond Green gets ejected very early on. You and I just watched the replay of that. Um, your thoughts? Like, did he deserve it? He's definitely chirping. He uh, definitely was mouthing off. First of all, look at me to deserve that. For, I mean, with the with your history and what's transpired and getting suspended, is number. I mean, stop talking to the officials. <laughs> Holy crap! How difficult is it? Come on, Draymond. 
stop talking to the officials. And if for some reason, somehow something happens that you get a technical foul and all, and you've got one, you never, ever even approach the officials. What the heck is wrong? And what I was shocked at in the video and the stuff in the second one was that his teammates were over there just shoving him the hell away from the official and not allowing him to talk to him. Come on, guys, protect him. He needs your help. You see him, any of you guys, if you see him even just run up and shove him out, get him, stop him. I mean, if the guy needs help, give him the help he needs. Why would you let him carry on like that? Yeah, I, I it's and I heard I heard Bob Fitzgerald on the call tonight saying that there was some contact. You know, I, I didn't see it. It was probably if it happened, it must have been incidental. If they pushed him away, you could never have contact. Get him the hell out of there. Yeah, yeah. Never I, let Draymond get. If Ray Draymond starts to even go and talk and get some fish, it's, it's got it's got to be a mandatory thing. Every player on the team, get him the hell out of the way. Get him away. <laughs> so with Draymond out of the game early, this happened very early in the game uh, in the first quarter. Uh, so Trace Jackson Davis suddenly had a particular impetus. Uh, and he, I think, I believe he, his, his minutes tonight were a season high, a career high, I'm guessing as well. Uh, 33 minutes, eight points, 14 rebounds, um, was huge in this game. Your thoughts on Trace Jackson Davis, sir. Uh, his, his father was Dale Davis. Uh, you, I'm sure you remember him as well as I do. Uh, I don't know if he reminds you of Dale that much, but he's, I love this kid. I don't know where the Warriors are without him. Big game tonight. Your thoughts, sir. Well, yeah, I mean, I'm surprised I actually didn't even score some more points because he can get you 20 points, too. I mean, if, ooh, you know, he was in mode. Uh, but, but I like what you talked about. He does a ton. He's a guy that has to, he's a factor around the rim. He can block some shots. He's getting rebounds. He's giving them what they need to have on the interior, and he's really more of an interior guy. So it's great to step up, and that's what you have to do as a player. You don't know when your number is going to be called. And you got to be ready to step up and perform. Okay, so he didn't get a lot of the points, but that's not what they're looking for. They got plenty of guys to get points. The points are a bonus. The fact that he's giving you he's giving you what Draymond had to give you, you know, rebounds. And even, you know, at 14, that's that's a great number. Absolutely. And I think that's it's done a lot of nice things. And I kind of like the way that he plays in a way. This is, he's not a frenetic kind of guy. He's just kind of a matter-of-fact kind of guy, I would say. That he's out there, he's doing it. He gets in the right spot, and he, and he plays and he plays strong and go up and he'll dunk it. Um, yeah, I mean, I like him. I, I think this is he has. I think he has a long future with the Warriors. Wholeheartedly agree with you there, Ayada, and I agree with your assessment a hundred percent. You're right. He doesn't play out of control. He he's not overly aggressive. Um, there's there's yeah. I I, I, I well, see the same thing. Calm, there's kind of a calm demeanor about him. Yeah, there is. You're absolutely right. Um, and, you know, I, we saw something tonight, Rick, that uh, I don't know if it's ever happened before. And that's Stephen Curry. Um, he did the night night. That's traditional. Do you like that, by the way, his his call sign that he, that he does? Uh, his new, It's become a relatively new signature about started two years ago. I don't remember him doing it before the Celtics NBA final series where he where he rests his, you know, his face on his on his the back of his hands and says night night to the crowd. It that's was a particularly that's Red Arrow Mark's lighting the cigar, right? <laughs> he, he, but tonight was a particularly emphatic version of it and then when he goes to the bench uh, after hitting that huge three that pretty much sealed the game at the end he kicks the chairs I mean Stephen Curry is a master in my humble opinion of controlling his emotions you, you don't see him veering one way or another when it comes to you know publicly showing uh, how he feels he, he couldn't contain himself there that was unusual your, your reaction to that Listen, we're all emotional human beings. I mean, I don't give a I don't give a crap what everybody says and what your demeanor happens to be. There are circumstances of things that will happen to you that all of a sudden something comes out of you that's like the devil is hiding and he wants to get out or something. So everybody has their moment. Nobody is their entire life or their total control of their emotions. And if something really means something to you, it has even more of a chance and impact on your reaction to what's taking place. And what you see and what's going on in your brain. So everybody's entitled to that. You know, you just hope that somebody isn't a violent person that wants to hurt somebody when they have these crazy things going on. Unfortunately, we have those kind of people around, right? So what happens is, you know, Draymond gets his technical fouls and Steph keeps it in. And certain times, he's like, shit, I can't deal with this anymore. And he's got to get rid of it. So and I think a little bit is the frustration. He really, and he, you know, knocking it down, he really hasn't shot the ball that greatly of recent time which is which is okay because at any time if it turns back on you know watch out 
kind of like what happens with clay at times right <laughs> right <laughs> absolutely he, um I think do you think mad. part of that had to yeah go ahead sir. no he's mad at himself because he's not doing what he knows he's capable of doing and playing at the level that he expects himself to play and in some situations like that if the fans are getting on or whatever and he hadn't shot the ball well you know he knocks the one down that you had had meeting and everything okay yeah damn it all right there you go let's you know and if he probably, if he was capable of doing it physically, he probably would kick himself in the ass. <laughs> probably. And Steph tonight, again, the, the points have not been there, but that's not the, the whole part of his game. He had 17 points tonight, well below his season average and career average. Um, was three of eight from beyond the arc, which is not bad. I mean, it's, it's just slightly below 50%. Um, but he did have 10 assists in this game, led the team in net rating with 18. Um, did you see what I see, Rick, which is an Orlando defense, which I believe came into this game third in the NBA, um, and, and they were clearly focused on stopping Steph. I saw what I, – I'm, I don't know if you saw the same thing, but to me, Steph was just a, mastered adjusting to that and and making the Magic pay for them doubling up on him. What are your thoughts? Well, first of all, I was told by my college coach, and it was my father-in-law, Bruce Hale, uh, a you know, pro player in his own right, he said, Rick, just understand when you go up there, you're going to have probably in an NBA season, there's going to be eight games or so, maybe eight to 10 games where things aren't just going and whatever. And you have to always find a way to contribute and do things that are going to be beneficial to your team. And so in Steph's case, he did, you know, he had to get some assists. It's kind of like what a good, it's what a good point guard should be doing. This is why I love, I love, you know, you know how much I love uh, Steve Nash. Because Steve Nash would rather get 15 to 20 assists than 30 points. But if you needed to get 30 points, he'd go out and help you get 30 points from him. And the same thing, Magic was like that, okay? Magic I mean, didn't Magic didn't care about scoring a lot of points. You know, he'd, he'd rather dish off and get, you know, 20, 25 assists if he could, as opposed to scoring 40 or 50 points. But, hell, if sometimes if you need him to get those points, then, you know, that he's, he's there to do it for you. And so that's... That's what I like about Steph. He does those yeah. things. He gets a lot of credit for it. Uh, you know, I, I but I, I'm just saying there's never been a player like him. He's just such an anomaly. And, and Absolutely. John Stockton was a player like that, too. I don't know if you agree with that, but I thought he could when he, if he had to score, he could. Um, but even though he was primarily known for passing and setting up the offense. Uh, but yeah, phenomenal game by, by Stephen Curry. Um, phenomenal game by the Warriors. A much needed win. We'll have a lot more to discuss when we come back. After we give some love to our sponsors this evening, and Rick, we also want to, uh, once again, even though we touched on this last show, uh, I want to discuss the USA Men's Olympic 3 by, three on 3 team because your son's a part of that. And you're going to be starting, speaking of 3 on 3, the big three. Uh, let's, get, I wanna, let's, let's give some of that uh, a little love as well. It's, it doesn't hurt to mention it. Um, it's fun basketball. Let's give some love to our sponsors first and, for, first and foremost, though. And first up is a car commercial, which is Nissan. Rick, what kind of car are you driving these days? I'm sure fans, there's, all, there's always the weird little questions that I, I feel like fans do want to know. What, what are you right? What's your ride or die? What are you rolling with? Well, actually, at one time I did have a Nissan. Nissan has some really nice product, you know. So if we want to, you know, work a deal or do something, I might be able to ride in another <laughs> Nissan. Yeah, they they have some nice, uh, they have some nice, nice uh, quality products. No question about it. I did, I did drive a Nissan. I was very happy with it. Absolutely. Same here. I had a Pathfinder once. And look, are you, if you're the kind of driver that likes to push things a little further, and if you ever wonder what adventure could be around the next corner, our friends at Nissan have a lineup of SUVs with the capabilities to take your adventure to the next level. The 2024 Nissan Rogue is perfect for city drives and great escapes. Class exclusive Google built in is your always updating assistant to call on for almost anything Gone are the days of connecting your phone. Google Assistant, Google Maps, and Google Play Store are built right into the 12.3-inch HD touchscreen infotainment system. The 2024 Rogue is the perfect midsize crossover for your next adventure. And my old ride, the, the, the Pathfinder, the 2024 version, has room for up to eight and expansive cargo capacity and advanced available 4x4 capability with 284 horsepower and up to 6,000 pounds of towing when adventure calls the pathfinder is there to answer take the nissan rogue nissan pathfinder or nissan armada and go find your next big adventure shop nissanusa.com and today's episode is also brought to you by amazon fire tv that's how i watch tv rick how do you watch tv do you have a fire stick or are you uh 
Are you plugged in with cable? How are you watching uh, TV these days? No, I don't have a I don't have a Fire Stick, and you know whatever you need to have is great. And I'm uh, I'm uh, I switched over. I'm actually a YouTube person. YouTube TV is amazing. Absolutely, and and I know a lot of people are consuming. Look, we're on YouTube right now, literally. But uh, Fire TV is your destination for sports, from live games to highlights to in depth analysis. Plus, you can watch YouTube TV with your Fire TV. Fire TV offers amazing viewing experiences with smart TVs as well as the Fire TV Stick that you can plug into your existing TV, and that provides access to millions of movies, TV episodes, as well as free and live TV. Whether it's opening weekend for baseball or the college basketball tournament, you're going to want to have a Fire TV. And Fire TV recently created Fire TV channels to deliver a constant supply of the latest videos from your favorite sports brands all for free. That includes all of us at Locked On and most of the big pro leagues and college conferences as well. Fire TV channels lets you dive into all of the game analysis <laughs> highlights and more to keep up the date on all the latest in the world of sports, March Madness, NBA, Major League Baseball, and lots more. Not to mention great news, entertainment, gaming, travel, cooking videos as well. Check out Fire TV channels on Fire TV and Alexa devices. If you haven't checked out Fire TV channels, you should. Trust me on this. To learn more, visit amazon.com slash locked on Fire TV. You are Locked On Warriors, your daily Golden State Warriors podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day, do you have to turn down the volume with all that shouting? Make the switch to Locked On Sports today. A free 24-7 sports streaming channel programmed for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming. Locked On Sports today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. We're part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And make sure you follow Rick Barry regardless of what social media platform you're on. Follow him at Rick. 24 Barry uh Rick besides being an absolute all-time athlete coach etc in the NBA you're also coaching the big three tell tell the folks about that when does the season start uh your team is the ball hogs um which if I I want to I want to actually be a part owner of that team that is a possibility I'm, I'm exploring but tell the world about the big three and your involvement in it sir well first of all I mean you know I I I, well, first of all, forget the basketball and give me the opportunity to stay around the game. But I love I'm talking about Ice Cube to start up this league with uh, just with a love and a passion that he has, you know, for, for the game. Um, it's it's been great. I mean, it really has been great. And it's given an opportunity for guys who do have that passion and love for the game to still have an opportunity to play. Uh, you know, guys who had some pre previous experience in the NBA and the young kids came along and took their way, but they still could play some and they have an opportunity to come out and play. And then even some of the other guys who have some names and some real value, you know, still love the game enough to want to come out and play. And they've had a bunch of those guys. They've had Joe Johnson, who was a nice player in the NBA. Came in, he's been a really dominant player and played exceptionally well. Um, some other guys who just retired are going to be playing in it. Uh, and it's going to be traveling around. In fact, hey, come on. I mean, all you people in the Bay Area, we're going to be in Oakland to start the season on January and on June fifteenth. Well, so, that's some news. Okay, we'll talk about that a lot more. And and Leandro Barbosa is he still on your team as well? Barbosa, who I actually saw a picture today when I had the, the trophy presentation I made to the Warriors when they won the Western Conference that time. And it's uh, I looked, it was Leandro standing next to me. I, I love Leandro Barbosa, and he's still as quick as heck. You know, I mean the Brazilian blur, and it's just a great, great guy. I have, I have such a great picture of he and i after a game i mean i love this so much of her heads I, I just i wish i could show i probably could i don't know i can't show it with my because i'm doing this on my phone but sometime i'll show you that photo but anyway i love him he's the team well, captain people can see it on your on your instagram account just if they just follow you at rick 24 barry it's look, just scroll down yeah it's scroll down and there's this great picture of me and leandro together with my head on it it's just it's awesome it is it's, awesome it, it is it's an endearing so, moment between you two um and caitlin clark by the way uh, quickly making a name for herself as a, a transcendent uh, star in women's basketball. Um, she's going to be in the WNBA next year, but the big three offered her $5 million. Uh, to play. <laughs> Incredible. I mean, I highly doubt she's going to accept, but still, I, I, I respect Ice Cube for making that offer. Um, any thoughts on that? 
if she did, if she wanted to be if she wanted to do something out of the and be a, a, a pioneer and do something extraordinary and be willing to see how it could work i mean that's five million freaking dollars okay i mean your your family and your life is set to do it for one summer for eight games think about that that's incredible no seriously that's a- I mean, seriously, I mean, do you think maybe she have to give it some serious thought? Is it worth it or would it ruin the rest of all my career? But the thing is, if it did for some reason, you know, I mean, who knows? Hopefully that wouldn't be the case. But she got five million bucks for eight games. That's it's incredible. Not- go to practice and do anything all week long. She shows up in eight cities and she plays eight games. You know what? I mean, come on. Think about that. Five million dollars. And. Wow, but you, do you think? I mean, if she were to do that, do you, what do you, the publicity that would generate the, the the media and the people would be around to see what would happen in that first game? It would be un freaking believable. But Absolutely. I, you know, what Jeff Quantness, who's a partner, has been involved in the sports world and, and the t- entertainment world, who's partners with Cube. I know he's behind this as well to go and get this out there. But my gosh, just think about what would happen if she said yes, I want to do this. Wow, would that be cool? That would it would be-, be fascinating. I it would be captivating. I think you would get an audience. I, I you know, I, the five million dollars would be a, a very wise investment. I, I would not doubt that. Um, yeah, that's nope. incredible. It's a gift. It, it, <laughs> yes, it's a, a lot gift. of money. Come it's on. a lot of money. That's over that's over five hundred thousand dollars a game. That's incredible. Yeah, well, I, I haven't heard her reject it, so we'll see what happens. But um, yeah, I would be I would be interested to see that. She would space. That pay scale, that pay get, pay scale comes out to basically better than most NBA play, way better yeah. than NBA players. Yeah, you're right. Five hundred thousand a game. That's yeah. That's still more than what most it's what six, any player is getting. I think six hundred something thousand a game. <laughs> Forty fifty million dollars each season. Not that many. <laughs> well, and they're, uh, eight, and they're playing eighty two games. Absolutely. Uh, go, go back to the Warriors again. A huge win tonight. Uh, one, a one hundred one ninety three. The final, a low scoring affair. And we mentioned Andrew Wiggins, uh, who had a huge game. They desperately needed him. Uh, one interesting uh, strategy, and I saw in the chat. Uh, I think World Beater one two three wrote, "Give Kerr credit. He sat Chris Paul and had Wiggins take the ball up the court and had him run the offense at the top of the key. We need more of that." Um, yeah, wholeheartedly agree. Uh, I don't know if Rick, if you agree with, the, with agree with that as well. Um, but here is Steve Kerr talking about Wiggins. What do we hear from Steve following this game? Uh, in terms of his perspective on Andrew Wiggins in, in the fourth quarter, just what kind of rhythm is he starting to find? Uh, Wiggs was fantastic. Um, just stepped up and made one big play after another at both ends. You know, had to, had the big block near the end on on Wagner, um, but um, made big shots. Got to the line, attacked. Um, yeah, Wiggs was was fantastic. Yeah, he was. There's really anything else to say about that. Sorry, let me pause that. Uh, any final thoughts on Wiggins, sir? Before we move on and 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 wrap up the show. Well, let, let's hope this is the resurrection. Uh, of Mitchell Wiggins, who has kind of like, you know, disappeared or has been kind of like the ghost coming and going and not knowing when he's coming and when he's going. So, yeah, it shows you that obviously he's capable of being the Mitchell, of, of being the Andrew Wiggins that we almost said his father's name yet, being the being the, uh, the the catalyst for the team during the playoffs. Hey, this is the time to step it up. So if he steps it up and the other guys get back into their games, the Warriors, again, become even more dangerous than I thought before because he hasn't played at that level. I haven't seen this. So if he can consistently start doing this again, that takes the Warriors to another dimension. That's a that's a great point you bring up because the, that's been Wiggins' biggest issue, at least from my perspective this year, is consistency. Um, the last time he had a game that I thought the, – the game I, that, I, that to me rivaled tonight in terms of – a top level performance from Wiggins was back on March 20th when the Warriors beat the Memphis Grizzlies at home. And in that game, Wiggins had 22 points and 10 rebounds. It was the rebounds, especially that stuck out to me, but then he followed that game with eight points and five rebounds. And, and, and I think you bring up a great point. If Wiggins can sustain this, it's a whole different beast, right? I mean, I, when we come back, Rick, I'd love to get your thoughts though, on what is making this Warriors team so good on the road they're below 500 at home but on the road they've already improved by nine games from a year ago and there's still a lot of season left so rick that's my tease for the audience 
what are your thoughts on that? Why are the Warriors so good this year on the road, but for some reason at home, the, the same intensity, the same success is just not there. So I'm going to ask that uh, from Rick and give some love to Kenny and Barry as well for making the Olympic team. Uh, that deserves uh, definitely some more time and acknowledgement after we give some love to our final sponsor of the evening, and that is a very valuable sponsor and resource for everyone out there, and that's BetterHelp, which is all about improving the most organ, the most important organ in your body, your brain. There is help for that, and BetterHelp is there for you. Uh, this episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. Give online therapy a try at betterhelp.com slash locked on NBA and get on your way to being your best self. And part of being your best self is sometimes getting help that you can't give yourself. And that's where therapy comes into play. You know, a lot of uh, a lot of times a gripe I hear about the therapy process for people is, I'm not really connecting with my therapist. Uh, my therapist doesn't understand me. Or it's just the connection's not there. You can cycle through therapists with better help until you find one that you think is a great fit for you. There's, you should never let stigmas get in the way. It is perfectly okay to seek a little help to get you through whatever is, is is afflicting you, whether it's anxiety, depression, anything that you feel like you need help for. BetterHelp is there as a resource to save you time and money as well in terms of it being virtual right from your home. You could be in your cozies. You don't have to waste money on gas and you get therapy right from the comfort of your own house. And that's what BetterHelp is there for. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be flexible and suited to your schedule. Visit betterhelp.com slash locked on NBA to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H E L P.com slash locked on NBA. You are Locked On Warriors, your daily Golden State Warriors podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. One final segment of Locked On Warriors. Thank you for making Locked On Warriors your first listen every day. For the everydayers, we're back at this at the absolute latest Friday when Stephen Curry gets some home cooking, playing in front of the Charlotte Hornets crowd. You know that organization is desperate to have Steph play <laughs> one season for him. Um, but regardless, he's a warrior, hopefully a warrior for life. And the Warriors travel to Charlotte. Uh, yeah, Rick, go ahead, sir. Okay, I'm going to two things for your sponsor. Please. The great thing about that sponsor, that company, is that you have the privacy of your home. I mean, you know, just to think about that. In the old days, I mean, Mike, if you had sometimes you had something you were embarrassed about, hell, you didn't even want to go to the doctors because people will see you. I mean, at least yes, you sir. keep it confidential to yourself. And with today's technology, you're there talking face to face. You know, it's it's amazing. I mean, there's a guy I know has a system that's going to happen even better. This called Cortex, where you can actually have a deal. You push a button, you have the medical doctor is right there. It's done through people's televisions. It's it's like unbelievable how good this thing is going to be. So anyway, it's that's a great. Well, better help will love you for that. I'm gonna I'll forward that along. Thank thank you for that. What was your second thing? Oh, and by the way, Nissan. I actually had Nissan and stuff when I was playing ball. I had the original 240 240 Z Datsun car <laughs> that Nissan bought the company and they changed the name from Datsun to Nissan. And I had that car and it was great, but I, I always joked about it because I had the car. I loved their little 240Z. And then all of a sudden they came out with the new model and some genius because it had stick shift. All of a sudden he put some door handle on the left-hand side so that myself with my size, I wasn't able, I couldn't do stick shift because I couldn't get my leg between the door. <laughs> and the steering wheel. So I remember that, but man, it was a heck of a pro heck of a product. Well, speaking of uh, speaking of driving and, and hitting the road, the the Warriors are being called the Road Warriors for very good reason. They're now twenty and fifteen on the year on the road. Last season they were eleven and thirty, and so far a nine game turnaround and counting. Uh, but meanwhile, at home, it's a, it's a whole different beast. The the Warriors are a game below five hundred. Um, if I have my stats correct, and what do you what do you attribute to that, Rick? Yeah, they're eighteen and nineteen at home. What gives? What is going on there? You know. You know that's a real conundrum. I, I don't really have the answer to it. I don't have the answer to a lot of things. I have opinions certainly about them. But to me, and first of all, let's let's clear the air. We're not bragging so much about the actual record itself as far as 20 and 15 being super great, okay? I mean, but compared to what they did last year, it was it's phenomenal, right? Yeah, and there, it's above 500 on the road. That's something to be at least a little proud yeah, of, right? But, to me, the one that's the most puzzling to me, because obviously on the road, you folk, I used to love the road because, I mean, you get away, you don't have all these things distracting, especially the guys who are family and kids and all the stuff you got to be doing. You can get out on the road and just focus and just take your time, do what you need to do. I, so I, I don't understand why road games, you know, why it's, 
that bad a thing. I used to love going on the road. I'd rather, because there's nothing like being able to play well enough in silence and arena. <laughs> I think that's what separates you from most people though. I think a lot of people get intimidated by 15, oh, 20,000 people yelling at them. Right. I mean, be able to go out and play and do well and get that arena quiet and have everybody leaving early. That is such a wonderful feeling. As a I, I get it. <laughs> I totally get it. <laughs> it's unbelievable. But at home, why at home? See, and then it may be the thing, you know, taking for granted. Oh, yeah, we're good at home. We can do it. We are able to get it done and all. And, yeah, it's one thing to have confidence, but it's one thing to be overconfident. I think this team has maybe, you know, fallen into the second category, which is basically getting a little bit overconfident and and, and taking it for granted that they're going to be able to win and do it home because they're at home because the record has been so phenomenal for over the years. And they've lost sight of, of staying focused and, and believing in themselves because certainly yeah. it's not of the crowd, the crowd is there still supporting them with, you know, sellouts. It's yeah. That, that's the thing to me. And you know, what the hell is going on with these guys? That's the only thing that I can figure It's just a little bit, a little bit complacent about things and a little bit too overconfident about, you know, being at home and it's come back to bite them because they've lost a lot of games that they should have won. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Um, and, and let's finish up with this. Your son, can, first of all, real fast. I got to give Moses Moody some love. I thought he had a great game tonight. Uh, 12 points in this game was a plus seven in net, net rating, uh, filling in, playing nearly 24 minutes. I, I wish we saw more Moody. I, I love this kid. And um, let's hope at least, you know, this season's almost over. Let's hope he's a, he's a much more prominent. Here's the thing. This team right now needs to do what our team did in 75. Is, is continue to let use the guys keep going deep, Steve. Keep giving all the guy who's not boom, he's out. Next guy's in, boom, this guy's out. I mean, the guys that are playing well, get them to play no matter who the hell it is. Yep. That's what it did. In game seven of the Western Conference Finals, two players on the bench in the third quarter for the majority of the last part of the third. Who's the and who's cheering for their guys and going? It's Clifford Ray and myself. It was the bench. And that's why I'm so glad that, the, you know, that we're going to hopefully we're going to for sure we're going to have this documentary coming out in the, you know, 2025. I'm on the Warriors. And so I, I just I'm seeing the potential in this team to do something. Yeah. Like that. And then if they ever decide to do that and they can continue to play at a level and uh, the experience in the playoffs, I, I think they can surprise a lot of people. I really do. I'm sorry, Kendrick Perkins. <laughs> i love it i love it uh and last but not least rick let's give some love one more time to candy and barry uh, talk about the elation with your family with canyon and i texted him congratulating him and i heard back he's he seems insanely happy uh, your thoughts yeah. take uh, away I'm, please. I'm just so i'm so delighted and happy for him he's he's a really good person uh, he's been through a lot. He's had, had, had the easiest journey and, you know, the way things that happened for him, but he's managed to overcome them. He's, he's the ultimate team guy. Um, so many disappointments that might've broken other people. And he just made a commitment that, Hey, what, well, you know what? Oh, I've done pretty darn good here playing in the G league and I can't even get a 10 day contract. And, you know, so I enjoy the three on three X three because it's a game where you, if you really understand how to play the game, you could really flourish. And with his athleticism and his all-around game and his intelligence, you know, he has thrived in that. He's been on yeah. five national teams playing international competition. They came – they got totally hosed a little bit. and they, they should have easily won the World Cup this year. But every team he's been on, one World Cup team, two America Cup teams, the Pan Am games, okay, they – and then they had another World Cup game. So they had – they won of the five times four gold medals and a silver. It could have been all five gold medals. So – He's worked his butt off and working at L3 Harris, who have been great to him, allowing him in his engineering job up in Melbourne, Florida, to be able to go around the road and be and miss stuff and do stuff off the, you know, of the Internet and trying to work around this stuff, going over to <laughs> over to Mongolia and going to the, you know, the Middle East and all over the world. And being able to help this team qualify after coming so close to make the, the Olympic team the last time when he got hurt two days before the qualifying tournament, they missed by one game of getting into the Olympics. But everything in life happens for a reason. It wasn't meant to be. And hey, that that Olympics would have never been the same kind of experience. No fans, no you know, going to the group. Come on. Now he's going to have a chance to be an experience a true Olympic experience for him. And to me, it was the biggest disappointment in my career, not getting on the Olympic team in 1964. So he's made it. And I saw the video that USA basketball put together. I think it's on Instagram, the video from USA basketball showing them making the calls to each one of the guys to tell them that they were chosen for the team. Cause even though these guys, these four guys, 
went through this whole thing, played all of these games in an international competition. Their record this year, the, the guys that made the team were 16 and one. And the only one loss was that heartbreaking loss in the World Cup. So think about that. They deserve to be on this team for what they did. And it's beautiful. But Canyon's reaction to when he did it, just, it just my wife and I both cried to see him because it really was extremely emotional. And to see something like that happen to him that meant so much to him. As a parent, you can't ask for any more. Oh, yeah, it sounds it sounds like it. And so congratulations to the Barry family. Uh, son number five makes the Olympics, the first one of the clan, and hopefully he'll win gold. Um, and I love three on three just because it's, if you're if you play basketball and not just organizationally, like we're talking uh, playground, we're talking, you know, the asphalt, the, the, the type of courts that a lot of people congregate to um, three on three feels a lot more like that. And and I love the, I'd love it I to me. And the fact that it starts right when the NBA finals ends, basketball continues for another month or two beyond that. <laughs> Um, and especially for the Olympics this year. So, oh, Rick, I don't know where you went, but we lost, we lost your visual. Anyways, oh, yeah, congratulations. Here. Oh, you're back. There we go. The Warriors win. And right now in the standings, uh, they, they're they a game and a half ahead of the Houston Rockets. A huge win just in that regard. And they're now once again uh, creeping up on the Lakers, uh, two games back of L.A. Um, but the, it's crazy. Oh. The it killed yeah, me. Final thoughts, sir. Go ahead. What killed me is that the Lakers, the game, they well, should never have won that game. Milwaukee should be ashamed of themselves for losing that game to the Lakers. My God. I said, oh, this is, would have been so good for the Warriors' cause. But also, I think Houston, Houston was, was getting beaten in their game tonight. So that might be maybe two games now. I don't know. Let's see the final score yet. But I don't know if you look up on it. But Houston was losing. So uh, well, I'm looking. Yeah, I'm, I'm checking right now. Uh, and, and the Rockets are – God, I don't know why it's taking me so long. Uh, you still can't find it. Are they playing today? Are the Rockets? Oklahoma City. They're playing Oklahoma oh, City. Losing. Here we go. They're losing by th- – oh, wow. This is winding down. We're not going to have the result by the end of the show, but 146 remaining, and the Thunder lead by five. So uh, yeah. if that if that holds, the, the Warriors will be two games ahead of the Rockets. Which is really, really three games. When you- more because they guess a tie the Warriors would win exactly so there we go so there is sorry for the delay there well, Rick thank you so much sir hey, always a pleasure and it really said to go and uh, I know that you're gonna do it because I know you'll write you would have texted me afterwards to tell me but the, the thing about it is you would have told me because actually tomorrow is my birthday so I will have a good day tomorrow doing a whole bunch of fun stuff and it's hard to believe because just think about it starting tomorrow, tomorrow. you on your show will be talking to an octogenarian. Tomorrow, so Mar- March 28th is, is the big 8 0. That's right, buddy. That's oh hard. my god, I, I, I don't, that, I didn't, I'm so sorry, I didn't realize it crept up on it. So happy That's early bad. birthday, and, and in some parts of the world, happy birthday! Yeah, wow, hey, you're <laughs> first of all, Rick, you are your proof that age is just a number, okay? Mars. Like, you are evidence of that right in front of us. I Mars. mean, because if, if, if every time like, the fact that you're turning 80 is mind blowing to me, you, you uh, can. Yeah, you, you you if you told me you're 65, I'd easily easily believe it. The fact that you're a pickleball champion currently um, is impressive. Happy birthday, sir! Well, yeah, what yeah. are you doing for your birthday? Any big plans? I didn't bring it up to solicit it. I just wanted to be. Back. I, know, I know, I know, I know. You never do. I, 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 I love the fact that tomorrow I can start to tell everybody, "Hey, listen, come on! You, why are you giving grief to an octogenarian? What a name, an octogenarian! That's I never a bad name. That I'm is. happy that I'm an octogenarian. Whatever That's the a name." Bad name. I hope I reach that too. <laughs> oh, that's yeah. So, anyways, happy birthday, sir. That is uh, that is impressive. Yeah, bravo. Um, any big plans? Are you doing anything? Uh, anything oh, fun? Fun stuff. I'll be playing some singles pickleball, getting ready for the U.S. Open next month. Because I'm trying to win the triple crown singles, men's doubles, and mixed doubles. And my partner Fred Shuey in men's and Sue Matthews in the women's. Uh, I'm really looking forward to playing with them and see if I can pull that off. You always have to have goals in life. And uh, I'd love to be able to have three gold medals hanging around my neck at the end of that competition. I hope so. Yeah, that'd, that'd be huge. Um, and before we go real fast, uh, one more time, an update. Uh, the Rockets now trail by just one point with oh. 33 seconds to go. Uh, but again, by the time most of you are watching this, that game will be over. Um, you can look it up. And the Lakers, by the way, are leading by 12 uh, with 24 seconds left. So that game is pretty much done. We can put that in the bag. So the Lakers right now will basically uh, sit two and a half games ahead of the Warriors in the standings. 
Um, but this Rockets game is way too close. I mean, one. What, what are your? I mean, we're already past the clock, so I might as well ask this. What are your thoughts on this Rockets team? Have you, have you had a chance to look at them much? I I did a crossover two days ago uh, with Jackson Gatlin of of Locked On Rockets. They're in an intriguing bunch, and, and what Ime Doke is doing there is proof of coaching's impact on the game in a positive manner. Uh, what what are your thoughts on this Rockets team before we go? Because they're 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 close. Well, they're lurking. What, what what's happening is they're starting to believe in themselves. That's a very mm. dangerous when you have young kids starting to believe in themselves with the right attitude playing you know very hard physical it's a matter of their focus and how well they can do it and how if they did get into the playoffs how god forbid they won't because i mean the warriors may be out but you know what do you learn through that experience and so uh the fact that the coach is utilizing them in the best manner possible and not trying to make them and force them to play into a system you put in a system that is a system for your players and their talents mm-hmm and then it's easier to get confidence when you're playing in a way that suits the abilities that you have to a T. Absolutely right. Um, I agree with you. And uh, get this, the Rockets now lead by two with oh. 8.9 seconds. Left. Three point shot. <laughs> they hit a three point shot. Yeah. Uh, uh, Amen Thompson, just uh, one of the Thompson twins uh, just hit a three. Um, incredible. So there you go. Well, they, all they- right. Tell you, the Warriors better watch out, man, because this team here could, could could overtake them if they if they falter. They're playing well. They had won eight in a row, and you know, until they had that loss, and now they come up with an unbelievable another like a come from behind victory, and that's it's big time, big time, unbelievable. They they came into tonight's game, and now I'm just dragging this long because I want to see this fi- this finish. But uh, they came into tonight with a nine game winning streak. So if they hold on and beat the Thunder, that'll make it ten. Never mind the fact that beating OKC in OKC is an accomplishment in and of itself but the warriors i mean that just now it's 112 109 so i'm guessing they're at the free throw line um so i that just makes tonight's game that much more important i mean if the warriors lose this game they could have potentially fallen into <clears throat> or just slipped back into just a wait yeah it could have fallen into a tie been tied. <clears throat> yeah that's incredible so whew, what a huge win what a huge win all right there we go thank you folks happy birthday rick opie has spoiled rodden you deserve it thank you deserve you. it sir call, call me <laughs> Call me after you after you after we hang up here. You got it. I'll call you right now. Thank you, everyone. Uh, and we'll be back at this soon. Bye-bye.